Creating a class module can often seem complicated and confusing. So in this video, I'm going to show you a simple method for creating any class module. And in the bonus section at the end of the video, I'm going to show you a proven technique that ensures your class modules always work correctly. Make sure to try out the VBA code for yourself by downloading from the description below the video. So let's go ahead and get started. If you like this video, then please click on the like button. And if you'd like to get notified of my upcoming videos, then click on the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it. If you've been using VBA for any length of time, then I'm sure you're familiar with the VBA collection. Well, the VBA collection is quite limited. You can simply add, remove, or get the number of items in the collection. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a better collection using a class module. So our collection will have the add and count and work the same as it already does, but we're going to add three new methods. So contains will check if it contains a particular item, clone will give us a copy of the collection, and to immediate will print the contents of the collection to the immediate window, which is very useful. So how do we get started creating a module like this? So we're going to start writing the code for our class very different than what you might see most people do. We're going to actually write the code that calls the class first of all, even though the class doesn't exist. So we're declaring this as a new collection ext for extension. And obviously we haven't created the collection extension class yet. But we want to write the code for exactly how it will work. So now we're adding the items. So this is just the way a normal collection works, but we've got to add this method to our new class. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a to immediate method. And this is a new one that writes the contents of the collection to the immediate window. So now we're going to create our class with the two methods that we are calling here. And the beauty of this is that once the class is created, we already have the code to test if it's working correctly. So let's insert our class module and we're going to call it collection ext for extension as we've seen already. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our collection as a private member. So this means the actual collection part of our class is not accessible by any outside code. And the idea is that if we decided to change collection to array or something else, it won't affect any code outside our class module. So now we're creating the add method. And this is quite simple because add already exists in a collection. So we're just simply passing it on. So we're just calling the add part of our private member. Now the next method to immediate, it doesn't exist for the collection. So this is one we're implementing ourselves. And what we're going to do here is going to allow the user the option to provide text. So this is useful for debugging if we want to say something like creating initial collection or removed item for a collection or added item to a collection. And we can just easily do it here. To write out all the items to the immediate window, we use a for each loop on the collection. And then we do debug print, and this will print each item to our immediate window. This is very useful for displaying which items are currently in our collection. Let's test out our class by running the code that we've written already. Now when we run this code, you'll see that it printed out the contents of the collection as expected. So this shows that add works and the to immediate method also works. So now we're going to add count to our class. So count returns the number of items in our collection. So it's basically the count in collection that we're going to use. So we'll just write some simple code here just to show it being used. And we're going to implement this as a property. And the reason we implement it as a property is the property allows us to assign using equals when we're using a class. So we use insert procedure and then we select property and the name. Now we can write the property ourselves, but this is the easy way of creating one. When we click OK, we get a let and a get property. So we don't want to let. The let allows us to change the value. We don't want to do that. We want to use the get property, which allows us to return the value. And all we've got to do is just like a function, we say count equals, and we're basically returning the number of items in our collection. So again, we run the code just to ensure that it works. And you can see the number of items equals three. So we've got our count working. Now count is quite simple. And the next one we're going to look at is contains, which is slightly more complicated. As usual, we're going to write our test code first so we know exactly what we're looking for. So we're going to check if our collection contains orange, then we're going to check if it contains banana. 
Now the first one will obviously be true and the second one will be false. So contains will be a function because it returns a value. And it takes text as a parameter and this is what we're going to search for in our collection. And then it will return a boolean. So boolean is either true or false. It either finds it true or it doesn't false. So we start by setting the return value to false. So if it doesn't find it, we'll get false. And then we simply read through the loop and we check if each item is equal to our search text. And so we use the string compare function. And the reason we use this is because in the future we can update this method to use text compare or binary compare if we want to involve case in our comparison. Now, if it finds it, we exit the for loop and we're going to return true. So let's run our code and see what we get. And you can see it says contains orange is true, contains banana is false. So our contains function works correctly. So now we're going to look at clone. So what clone does is creates a copy of the current collection. So it'll provide a copy of the collection with all the items in it. And we use the set keyword to set the variable because we always do this with a object. Now, if we didn't use clone here, what would happen is we'd basically have two variables and they'd be referenced in the same collection. So sometimes this causes confusion. Now I'm going to add a different item to both of these collections so that when we print out the results, we can see that the collections have different items in them and are actually different collections. So we'll simply print 2D media window, collection one and collection two. So now that we have our test code written, let's go and write the actual code for cloning. So clone is a function because it's returning an object. And what we're going to return is actually this class. So the current class is the object that we're returning. This might seem a bit confusing at first, but VBA can handle this no problem. So we declare our new call as a new collection extension. And at the end of the function, we'll return new call to the caller, which is the new collection. So now all we've got to do is simply use a for loop to read to our collection. So let's take the one from up here. And for each time we go through the collection, each item we add to our new collection extension object. And then at the end, as we've already done, we're going to just return that. So that's how simple it is to do our clone. So we run the code and you can see that the first one has mango and the second one has banana. So they're actually two different objects. So in this bonus section, I'm going to show you how you can know that your class is always valid. So in this section, what we have is we check on count, contains and clone, and we make sure that they're returning what they should by having a conditional statement. So for example, count equals three, or contains orange is true, or contains banana is false. So when we run the code, you can see it always returns true for everything, as long as our class is working. But if we change contains, for example, and we set contains to be true, always, even if it doesn't find something, then when we run our test code again, what you'll see is that banana is now false. So if false happens here anywhere, we know that something has gone wrong with our class. So this is very useful because if we update our class in the future, we can simply run these simple checks and find out if something has gone wrong. If you like this video, then please click on the like button. And if you'd like to get notified of my upcoming videos, then click on the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it. And make sure to check out my other class module videos like the one you can see on the screen.